Welcome to Wisdom for Nonprofits, bringing the best business wisdom to the nonprofit world. Proven leaders share their experience, insights, and best practices. Finally, a podcast for the busy nonprofit professional. And now, your trusted advisor, Bettina Meyer Flug. Why are nonprofits should care about storytelling? That's a question we're going to clarify on this podcast today. Many nonprofits struggle to find creative ideas for fundraising. But they can all be unique if they start telling their stories. There are many different ways you can work with storytelling. We have a special guest today, Valerie Monsley, who is specialized in visual storytelling. Verily Monsley works with nonprofits and business to tell stories through documentary photography that inspires hope, education, and connect with supporters. She believes that storytelling is one of the most powerful tools organizations can use to increase social media reach and fundraising results. She has over a decade of experience in photo journalism and a heart for social documentary photography. She earned a master's degree in photojournalism from the University of Missouri, where she learned to tell stories with photographs. Inspired by the social documentary work of the concerned photographers, she focused on making pictures that made a difference, even on a small scale. Valerie's empathy allows her to connect with people quickly so they are com comfortable allowing her to document their lives. Daily newspaper work taught her how to be with people during intense experiences, from joyous of a birth of a baby to communities shock and grief in the aftermath of an EF5 tornado to the ongoing struggle of making ends meet. She believes everyone's story deserves to be told and has worked with respectful with people from all walks of life. She has collaborated with several nonprofits, including Project Self Sufficient, Home Award 2020, and Colorado Trust. Valerie, welcome to our podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Can you tell us why you have this connection with nonprofits? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so, I, it seemed like a natural extension of my newspaper work. I was on staff at newspapers for about seven years, and I was able to um, to tell long-term documentary stories that illuminated social issues, um, starting with a series on child poverty in the Ozarks, which really... Uh, it really made a difference in a way that I think a lot of journalists hope to do, but we don't see that happen very often. Uh, the series started a conversation in the community and ultimately resulted in um, the forming of a nonprofit that was dedicated to improving the lives of children in the Ozarks. So seeing that how that work actually made a difference was pretty powerful to me. And so when I left newspapers, um, working with nonprofits seemed like a natural step because they have a similar impact. They are all about making the world a better place and improving the lives of individuals. And so it just seemed like they all, a lot of them also recognize the power of storytelling in order to engage people in their cause. So it just seemed like a natural fit. And yeah, I've been able to do similar work that I did at newspapers for nonprofits. It's been good. How did you get involved with nonprofits? My story was really fun. I was young, I think I was around seven years old and I had four grandmothers, but I didn't have any grandpa. And I miss so much the conversation with my grandpa. I said, I want to find some grandpas. And I went to my mom and said, hey, mom, where can I find a grandpa? <laughs> and she said, we have a nursing home here where people are really lonely. If you want me, I can take you there. 
And this started to be my journey every Sunday. I wanted to talk with my grandpa. <laughs> and I had more than one I could pick. So I went room by room to talk with them and enjoyed so much. So I started visiting nursing homes when I was seven. And my mom always rescued dogs from streets in Brazil. The, the reality over there is so different than here. So uh, I got involved with animals and then... I was really touched by a chimpanzee in a circle. I was able to hold him on me, my, my lap. And then I thought he will be more happy in his hometown, not here in the circles. <laughs> <laughs> and the second time I held a chimpanzee again, and I said, I have to do something. I cannot just come to the circles and watch them being sad here and working. They're exploring them. So I started getting involved with animal protection organization as a volunteer. And I'm doing this since I can understand myself as a person. So I'm really involved with them. I made a career in marketing, but then I decided to give back. Whatever I learned in the marketing, I wanted to give back. So I dedicated 20% of my time pro bono helping nonprofits implement marketing and fundraising strategies. That's why I created this podcast, and I'm so happy to have you here, Valerie. And I really would like to learn the impact of the visual uh, when we are talking about storytelling. It's really hard nowadays because uh, people are daily being impacted with more than 3,000 marketing um, messages every day. It's really, really hard. And... For your nonprofit to tell your story in a meaningful way, you have to bring something different. And pictures can help you a lot. And that's why uh, Valerie is here with us. She's going to talk a little bit about how to transmit stories through your pictures. Tell me a little bit about your experience, how the pictures are helping uh, nonprofits tell their stories, Valerie. Well, uh, a photo truly is worth a thousand words. You know, our, our brains process images 60,000 times faster than words. So you can look at an image and immediately have a feeling or wonder more about the person or, or have questions and want to know more. Photos can get to the heart of the story a lot faster and they can also draw in interest to make people want to read the story and find out more about the person or the nonprofit's mission. That's awesome. Yes. I understand that whenever people are reading a text, they have to create their own image on their head. And we can use an, a, a great example. When Henry Ford was launching the first car, people didn't know what a car was. So uh, the word he used was a uh, horseless carriage. So people could create the image on their head. I yes. think pictures, they help so much people to visualize what is the message that you want to say. And on your bio, I was reading it, and, and you really are a very empathic person. How important it is for you when you're taking pictures from a project related to a nonprofit to your, your empathy to make it happen. Can you tell you some stories how... You've been working with nonprofits and how you use your empathy to take the best uh, of sure. the people. Yeah, well, any documentary project is a relationship between the photographer and the subject. And you have to establish trust with that person so that they're willing to let you into their lives. Um, I'm just really curious about all kinds of people and I like getting to know people and I I want it to be more of a collaboration you know um, in in photojournalism as well as in working with nonprofits there's a, an ethical consideration about how we're treating the people and telling their story and that's always at the top of my mind um, so I think just just getting to know people and being curious about their story allows me to show it and tell it in a way that other people will also respond to. I'm like a proxy for the audience. <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome. And do you think stories can increase the chance of making an impact in the donor, donor's mind? Absolutely. I think that photography is one of the most powerful ways to make a connection between people. So it's I see it as making a connection between the beneficiary of the nonprofit and the donor and and kind of introducing them to each other so that the donor can understand more about how the nonprofit actually helps people and what it looks like in their daily life. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and the most important part is not just to touch the person, but to help them make a move to donate, to help, to support your organization. And creating this connection between the person who is receiving the service and the person who is donating the money, you create the experience of the donor to become a hero. Yes. So how can you bring this to the table, for example, a donor donated some money for a child organization. How can you make the donor feel like a hero using your pictures? Mm. Well, um, I'll tell you an example of, uh, I worked for Project Self-Sufficiency for three years, um, sharing stories of some of their participants in the program to be shared at a fundraising luncheon. To, to show the donors how their money has helped the cause in action. So an example would be when I made videos for Project Self-Sufficiency to show at their luncheon, the annual luncheon. Um, I For three years in a row, I followed a single participant that received support. And the goal of each photo story was to show how the participants' life was changed because of the support of Project Self-Sufficiency. So I showed them running errands in the car that the organization provided or um, just cooking dinner or studying because they're mostly all going to school to better their lives. Or one participant was in the Firefighters Academy as a single mother, you know, and so I showed her um, training and studying and being a mom. And all of these things are things that people relate to. So when the donors see that kind of storytelling, you know, a lot of them maybe were single parents before and they can relate to that struggle and they can also see how their dollars are actually making a difference in a person's life. She wouldn't be able to go to school if she didn't have the support of the organization. So it's showing the concrete ways in which the nonprofit is helping people. I know that politicians are using sto storytelling for a long time on their campaigns, and now there is science behind. Storytelling compared to a bunch of texts can make a big impact in our brains. And we tend to remember two to seven times more if somebody tells us a story. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you engage to start telling the story whenever you go to a nonprofit? What is the first step that you do to be able to create those compelling stories? Well, it starts with um, their goals. And usually the nonprofit will have a person in mind, a beneficiary of their work that they um, think would be a example. And we just talk about the impact that they want to make, why this story is emblematic of the difference that they make. And then I work directly with the beneficiary of the nonprofit um, to find those moments so I can be there for the storytelling situations in their life. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's very important for us to keep the message current with what's going on in the world. For example, if your organization was preparing a campaign of something and then a, a shooting happens, for example, here in Boulder, our um, story needs to be current what, what, with what's happening around us. How can we quickly adapt and, and with the images and all the stories with what's going around us on that time? How can you help a nonprofit do a quick action 
to to adapt the message with the environment. So because of my newspaper experience, I'm uh, pretty good at adapting quickly and jumping into action with little notice. I often freelance for publications still where I only have a little bit of notice to do to before an assignment. Um, and so I can make the photos and also help with the text. I provide captions for my photos for nonprofits. Can you also combine your work with someone who is writing on the blog of the nonprofit? For example, if the nonprofit already have somebody uh, responsible for creating content, how can you combine your work with uh, a professional like that or a volunteer that's helping out? We can identify if you already have topics planned that you want to write about, I can help nonprofits figure out what the powerful images are going to be that go with that text. Um, or it can work the other way around. This might be getting more into social media strategy, but you know, it's a lot easier to plan for me anyway, I'm a visual person. So I think it's easier to start with the photo and then decide what, to say about it. So if you have a library of images already created and ready to go, it can be a lot easier to plan or it can work the other way around. I have one client, this is not a nonprofit client, but she likes to plan the themes that she's going to talk about on her social media. And then we kind of come up with a checklist of photos that will go with those themes. And we just knock those all out in one session. So it can work either way <laughs> start with the photo or start with the text great and you mentioned something about social media and i will give an input very uh, important here is the cross pollinization when i say that is that uh, people are getting information from different ways so if your nonprofit uh, has a message that needs to go out you have to adapt this message to different channels and post all over uh, all the, the social medias that you can and and being as far as wide as you can with your information. And that's okay if a person see more than once your message, it will re help remind your cause and everything. But keep in mind that not only one social media, but all the platforms, you have to have the same message. Mm -hmm. And talking about message, I'm talk I want to know your uh, point of view on identity. It's very important for a company and for a nonprofit to have their own identity. For example, when we're talking about cars, Volvo, what comes to your mind when you talk uh, you you think about Volvo? Is in security? When you talk about subway, is in fresh that comes to your mind? What is the identity that your nonprofit um, have to the world that's very important to have and be embedded in all your campaigns. Mm -hmm. Harry, how can you help a nonprofit capture their identity? That storytelling is the best way to capture an identity. So it's all about the 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 stories that you want to tell and then also how can you show that through the visuals. That's perfect. And one great idea of to do that is for you to take pictures when somebody that's receiving your service is coming in and how do they come out? Yes. Have you had an experience of photographing when they come in and when they come out and see the difference between? Yeah, I did a project for Homeward 2020 um, with a man who had experienced homelessness for most of his life. And he was able to get to the top of the housing list. And so they knew that he would soon be housed. We weren't sure when it would happen, but I spent time with him before he had housing, um, just in his daily life, going to the different agencies and even at the shelter where he was staying, I documented him there. And then of course it was very important to be there on move-in day. So I photographed that experience and all the joy that uh, came with being housed for the first time. And I even stuck around afterwards 
to show kind of how his life had changed. You know, there's a one image of him like jumping into the pool at his new apartment that uh, just seemed really joyful. So that's an example of how to tell a, a story through photos that has a beginning and a middle and an end. Um, you know, and of course, everybody's story is ongoing. There's no real end, but <laughs> for storytelling purposes, we have to stop it somewhere, right? What a wonderful story. I have a, a campaign that I really like. It's from a, a hunger charity. And it's a very simple charity. And they didn't hire any PR, or any marketing agency to help them. But they came up with an amazing campaign just by observing. They observed that the kids who they offer food, when they received the food, they were smiling. Mm. So they arrived very, very mad because they didn't have the basic needs. But after receiving a meal, they started smiling. So mm -hmm. their slogan was, we produce 1,000 1, smiles a day. And this really makes people want to know more. How do you produce this 1,000 smiles a day? And then people start thinking, yeah, a, a, a child should have food. A child should have an opportunity to smile. Mm -hmm. What can I do to make them smile more? So your story, it's amazing. And, and even if your nonprofit doesn't have enough uh, money to hire a marketing agency, but you can be creative just by observing the people who is receiving your service. Yeah. And, and to really just show their humanity, right? Like there is this idea of poverty porn where it's just like the, um, you know, just showing the sad lives of the people who need the help. And that's not the best way. That's kind of exploitative. You know, it's better to show them as a whole person. And that's kind of how people will relate to them as well. So you want to show um, emotion in all its forms not just the despair. Of course. And what I would recommend um, is for the nonprofits to start being a collector of stories. If you cannot afford to have a photographer all the time with you, maybe you can have a photographer coming and teaching your staff on how to take great pictures. So Valerie can help on that too, also in the training, how they can, using their own their smartphone, uh, to be the eyes of your organization all the time because you need collectible stories. And maybe she can help um, giving them examples and inspiring them and going with them on field to do that. But if you have like a consistent of collecting stories, you're going to have everything you need whenever you need. Have you ever trained somebody to take pictures with the same eye that you have, Valerie? You know, I've done talks with journalism classes. I haven't done uh, long trainings, but I love to talk about the power of photography and how to make impactful pictures. So I'd be happy to talk with anyone about that. Um, I will say if you're a nonprofit staffer and trying to collect these stories and trying to make impactful photography, it's helpful if you can set a aside time just for the photography because it's really hard to make photos um, that have an impact if you're trying to do two things at once, right? So if you're trying to coordinate an event, it's probably not the best time to take photos. You really need a little bit of time to focus on one thing. <laughs> yes, maybe having a, a volunteer and helping out on this area would be great, but having a professional that really can capture the image that you want to express, the idea behind it, that's that's doesn't have uh, words, <laughs> as I can say. Do you want to tell us any story that really touched your heart when doing those type of work? Okay, so this was a newspaper story, um, but there were lots of nonprofits involved in the process, and it's one of those that I think is the same kind of story that I would do for a nonprofit. So when I was in Springfield, Missouri, I was um, I was documenting a, a camp of people downtown that was being broken up by the police, and I met a 19-year-old girl who told me that she was pregnant, and 
I couldn't stop wondering what she was going to do. So I tracked her down and I got in, I got a hold of her and the next week started photographing her throughout the pregnancy. And I think that my interest in her story gave her a lot of motivation to change her situation. I mean, who knows if she probably would have done it anyway. She was a very determined person, but we published the story in two parts. So the first part was kind of in the middle, like, this is her situation. What's going to happen when the baby gets here, you know? And I think that just being in the public eye in that way really motivated her to, to do a lot of hard work to turn things around. She got a job. She was able to get housing. And she did have a place to bring the baby home to. So, wow, I really love the story. That's amazing. I was working with Meals on Wheels here in Colorado. And I think it's really motivating when your volunteers can tell the story why they're involved with the organization because they have, they have their own eyes. Mm -hmm. I was talking with some volunteers and they said, it makes me smile when I deliver a food in a, a, a home and this person haven't seen another person in a week and I'm the only touch point that this person has. So that's the reason I keep coming and delivering food every day. And um, if you can have your volunteers involved, telling their story, why they're involved with this organization, this can make a huge change. And what I will suggest for you as a nonprofit professional is to try to change the culture of your organization in two ways. First of all, you are not a collection of social soldiers. So people that are very hardworking, you have to have social evangelists, people that consistently tell their stories and explain the root cause of the problem and what they're doing to, to solve this problem. And also we tend to go very into budgets and efficiency and numbers and publishing that. Instead of that, we should be more consistent in telling stories and go back to the basics, why we're doing that. So if your organization wants to make a huge change, start to using the storytelling again. The art of storytelling is really, really strong. And if you need any help on that, you can count on many people to help you out. And Valerie uh, is offering a 30-minute uh, free consultation that you can schedule with her on her website. All the information from Valerie will be on the description of this podcast. And also, if you prefer to send an email directly to her, she's here to help. Do you know, Valerie, if you want to say something for the nonprofits, how can you help them? Well, I can help you figure out a visual strategy to share your story. Um, and, you know, that can be either through social media or in printed materials, or like I mentioned before, I've often done videos that incorporate photos and interviews. So there are lots of ways, and I'd just be happy to explore ideas with any nonprofit and uh, offer suggestions and see how we could work together. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys contact Valerie. And if you guys need any help uh, to be coach, I'm executive coach for nonprofit professionals. Uh, you can learn more about me on the website, www.witchy.tech. And I'll be more than happy to go and visit your organization and understand more about your mission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Valerie, for being here. And thank, thank you guys you for that. listening to us. It's been great talking with you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Wisdom for Nonprofits. To hear past and future episodes, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast channel. We appreciate your reviews and suggestions for future show topics. If you have a question or a suggestion, please write to us at podcast at wity.tech. More resources are available for you at our website, wity.tech. And please join us in the Wisdom for Nonprofits group on LinkedIn. Wisdom for Nonprofits is copyright 2019. 
by Bettina Meyer Flug and WITY.tech. All rights reserved. <laughs>